the Longford barracks, which uh, I worked with before for the 1916, we had made all these figures to kind of commemorate innocent people who had died during 1916. And it's such an amazing venue, this barracks, but something we became aware of that it was actually a cavalry barracks. And bringing those two things together, it was just a perfect match. And, it, and it's a perfect venue. And it frames the work and that lantern work really well. And, and we knew these things. So we got great support from Longford County Council. And then the Arts Council in turn were really enamored with the idea and the funding all came through. So we were, part of the project was working with the people from Longford. And Light Brigade is, is bigger than the title from the point of view that we, we've, we've borrowed that word from the Charge of the Light Brigade because there is a connection between the barracks and uh, the Crimean War because of course people were trained there and horses were trained there. Um, but it's not about that, it's about, it's about us as human beings and the people of Longford after going this, through this really difficult time with the Covid and that kind of power and strength as we're marshalling it to kind of propel us forward and we're kind of using the horse as an analogy or an image that we're, is dear to all our hearts and is very close to the location it's in, in the barracks and that whole historic quarter uh, was all about the horse. An important part of the project was involving people of Longford in the work. Uh, and, and this is what we've done in past projects. And it gives real ownership to the work and it, it grounds the work, as I would phrase it. Shane rang me, Shane Cross, and set it up. And uh, we didn't really know what to expect, but it's quite an enjoyable day now. And uh, it's really very good what's going on here. And it's something new that we hopefully will be able to bring into practice from here on in. Tom is brilliant, he shows he's an expert in this uh, making of these lanterns and telling us about different shapes that he can make and from here on I hope that we'll be able to put some of it into practice. It might be just as skillful as Tom but he certainly, he knows what he's about anyway and I'm sure he'll always be there to give us help if we need his advice in, in the future and indeed Raquel there as well, she's very good as well. Yeah it's very good, yeah there's no question at all about it, there's a variety of stuff in this and it's it's great, it's great for all our members, like I mean we have 25 or 6 members so with this Covid I suppose it's restricted us a bit but we're, we're, we're still getting a good few there. We worked with 80 individuals in 8 different groups um, in Longford and they ranged from men's sheds groups to women's groups to um, TY groups. Well, that was a great experience and we made these pod-like structures which the people went out and collected leaves and foliage from, from Longford, from the environment and kind of sealed them into the tissue paper and into these pods. Um, it's great to see the students interacting with an artist and asking him questions about how he became an artist and just great to see them learning all new skills and working on such a large scale as well. It's something that they'd never really get the opportunity to do uh, in a day-to-day -day classroom setting. So to me these pod-like structures really represent the, 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 almost like the eggs or the seeds um, of, of the, the Longford people um, and that, that's interspersed in the installation with the horses. Um. The, the fact that they're getting to work lar large scale, uh, we wouldn't again have much of an opportunity to do that within the art curriculum in school. So getting to make big large scale sculptures is a really good bonus. So the, the, uh, the community element um, were made by people that maybe have never done art before, wouldn't consider themselves arty or artists. And what's been really um, exciting is seeing people, because there is a technique um, which I um, lead people through and I show them the technique and we've used um, wire and it's wire that unbeknownst to you, you're looking at all the time because it's fencing wire. So we're surrounded by it in Ireland. Every fence in Ireland, that's the, fence, that's the wire we're using. And mask and tape and some bamboo for support. So we make these frames with this wire and the tape 
and then we use the bamboos to kind of give it some rigidity. And then we cover those structures with cling film as a base. And then we use this very special tissue paper called wet strand tissue. And then that gets soaked in PVA glue and placed over these frames we've made. Um, and when the glue dries, they're finished and we and put lights inside them. So it's a very simple structure, lan lantern making. Um, it's not so much how I'm finding it really, I'm just looking at the students here and the work that's been produced. I mean, that's the most important thing and uh, it's incredible. I mean, they're, they're there since half past nine this morning and it's nearly lunchtime now and um, Jesus, the, the energy they're putting into it, the interest they have in it, the positive feedback they've been giving us. Um, yeah, it's exceeded expectations, I have to say. It's been, yeah, it, it's been a hugely successful morning. So before they know it, they're making sculpture and they're making all those creative decisions. But people get into the flow of it and because it is a very natural thing. But because it's not traditional art materials, people aren't intimidated by that or the white canvas and the paint. It's not that. It's materials we're very familiar with, like wire and cling film and tape. And the next thing you know, people are making these wonderful creative decisions, intuitive creative decisions, and that can be seen in the work. Um, I, yeah, there's a there's a gorgeous kind of confidence that people end up doing because they're, and I think it's because they're using materials that are natural to to them. Um, of, of course, there's some natural materials, but they feel they feel it's normal. And the next thing, they've stood back. We've put lights inside these lanterns, and they're like. Oh, I, I didn't realise I was making a piece of sculpture. <laughs> but there's something that happens when the hands are engaged, I think, where it's almost like a meditation with your hands and you're thinking with your hands rather than overthinking things with your mind. You know? I find the workshop absolutely brilliant. It's great to have young people engage in the community, in their own family resource centre and doing work you know, on something that they're creating from scratch themselves and being part of this amazing workshop. So it's absolutely brilliant. It's a pleasure to work with Tom. Um, he's a great way with the kids. He's really uh, patient and really kind and uh, just really open to sharing his experience as an artist.